Okay, so the purpose of this video is to take you through the new functionality that we've added to Colleague version 6 as part of helping you manage the GDPR um, related uh, legislation, specifically targeting right to consent, right to be forgotten and right to access. Um, so I'll cover each of these uh, main features, what we've done, how they would work and uh, this is essentially a tutorial guide for the purposes of a client that is either due to receive these v6 um, updates or has just received them and they want to circulate obviously the knowledge among the the client base that are, or the user base that's obviously um, using version 6 so um, within uh, colleague for, for starters uh, with it's not version dependent in terms of the GDPR updates um, providing you are on uh, version 6 um, we can deploy this to your system um, so that's one element to, to be aware of but if we just go into a candidate record and I'll cover what's uh, specifically different um, within the candidate um, and the key point is basically on the custom fields tab there's a section here um, called GDPR and this contains four different fields um, which are, 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 are related to the GDPR functionality um, so you've got consent given uh, which is a yes no field you've got consent requested which is a date field you've got response received which is a date field and you've got record ID uh, and record ID is an encrypted uh, GUID um, or, or specific encrypted ID that's unique to this system and specifically this record as well and it's this um, reference number that we use uh, as part of the link that we're going to create when we create an email that we send to the candidate essentially requesting their consent um, so that's a, a very important link and it's been set um, as, as a, essentially a read-only um, field if you were to, to delete this record ID and come out the record when you go back into it it would have been restored uh, because we it's obviously a, a set value that obviously always, always needs to be retained within the record um, in terms of uh, actually running the workflow um, what I'll do now is so from the candidate record if we either right click and hit send email or from up from here just press send email what it will then do is obviously open up a uh, Outlook email off the colleague uh, Outlook plugin tab uh, there's the option to select email templates and you'll see an email template called candidate GDPR request if this was done being done from a contact record it would be called contact GDPR request um, and essentially you, you select the template and hit insert um, now what this will do is it will load it with what is our very basic default wording in terms of our letter template um, obviously you may wish to either provide us with or edit the email template that we put in place um, the wording can be as you see fit um, but what is key is that you don't update the yes link or the no link um, as those are specific um, URLs which have been set up so that it obviously maps back to your system based on whatever the uh, candidate or content to chooses from those links um, so if we just edit this very briefly we'll call it GDPR consent request and also as a key point what you, what you also need to do is you need to update the um, history selection so that you select consent requested and by doing that it makes sure it, it makes colleague know that this specific email was related to requesting consent uh, from a candidate and then it will update that can that um, requested date field that we went through on the uh, custom fields tab so we'll send this email now and off that goes um, and then if we go back to the candidate record what you'll see on the custom fields tab under consent requested is that that date field has now been populated with today's date and from a history perspective you've got consent requested history um, option there with the date and obviously we've got a copy of the email so you've got an audit trail in terms of the fact that you requested consent on this date this was the consent request um, and obviously this is where it's been stored and obviously all these fields are searchable using the search um, within the system so what I'll now do is I'll go to my Outlook um, and I'll review the email and obviously select one of the links. Okay, so I've gone to my Outlook account now and I've seen obviously the email come through. Um, so if I open up this email, um, I use the uh, uh, known as name of, of, of Mark um, against my 
record um, so that's come through as dear Mark um, and obviously the text the default text that we use um, is there but what's key is obviously the um, yes and no options um, are there and obviously the links associated with them which is obviously uniquely mapped back to that candidate record um, are displayed here um, so what I'm going to do because I'm doing this with a view to showing all the workflow what I'd like to do is deny consent against this candidate record and then when I'm going through the right to be forgotten workflow I can then obviously delete this record um, so what I'll do is I'll select uh, no here um, and this is what the candidate would basically be doing that he would be selecting yes or no and on the basis of selecting no it's obviously launched a, a landing page which is just advising um, you know we're sorry to have not received your consent your details will be removed from our system shortly and, and obviously as you can see there the unique GUID has, has come through as part of updating that and that's now being tracked back to the system um, as a response from the candidate on the basis of, of, of what's been selected. Um, so what we'll do now is we'll go back to um, the colleague system and we'll just review that data coming back into the system and obviously from the user's perspective or from the candidate's perspective they can close that down now and not think about it because they've done their bit. Okay so we're back in colleague now and if we go back to the candidate record that we were in before and if we go to the custom field ta uh, tab and, and specifically looking at the GDPR fields, we can see obviously that the record has been updated through that web service um, and the consent given option of yes or no has been set to no and the response received date has obviously been set to today's date. Um, so that's an overview of when we requested consent, when the res a response came back and what the candidate's choice was in terms of advising consent um, or authorizing consent or denying it. Also from the history tab we have um, a consent denied history type added here as well um, and obviously you can see there that um, that's basically the, the history text relating to that history type. Um, so we've got a log of requesting consent, it being denied, and we've obviously got um, the uh, custom fields in here that's logging the specific data as well in a manner so that it's searchable. So you could do date range searches against uh, candidates that you've requested consent but yet not had a response back. Um, and also you could look for candidates that have not given consent as well. But that will be covered in the right to be forgotten component in terms of what we now do with this record because essentially we've got a candidate now that needs to be deleted from our system. Um, so the next step along will be the right to be forgotten component. Okay, so the next point to cover relates to the right to be forgotten uh, segment of the legislation and this covers uh, a candidate or contacts right to be removed from your system um, in the event uh, of uh, them basically requesting or denying consent um, for you to retain their data. So uh, we've gone through the, obviously the consent process, we've denied consent um, from a candidate and now we're looking to actually delete, physically delete that record from the system. Now previously colleague has had um, a delete record mechanism um, which can be used to delete a record uh, but essentially that deletion process is, is an archive um, because it's removing that record from view. Um, we've then given you an option obviously to undelete and, and, and restore that record uh, but obviously under the grounds of, of GDPR um, there isn't really the option to restore. The, the, it, it's quite clear that in the event of someone requesting for their data to be deleted, the, delete, the data should be deleted and there shouldn't be a way of, of, of restoring it or, or keeping track of it in any way. So by, by all uh, natures what, we, what we've basically got is a deletion process which is an archive really um, and what we've now had to incorporate is a new deletion process which um, will thoroughly delete a record in adherence to GDPR. Um, so to access this option um, off, is off the view tab uh, and then you hit reports and what you've got here is an option here called GDPR right to be forgotten uh, and you hit OK there. So this will bring back a report or bring through a report criteria um, that allows you to highlight the records or, or, or search on the records that you're looking to find and delete. Um, initially you've got uh, an entity type option here of choosing between candidate or contact. We'll choose candidate. Um, you can enter in the specific ID of the record if you know the record that you're looking to delete through this process. Um, but um, yeah, if you leave it as zero, it's going to search on, on wh whatever other criteria you may enter and not worry about specifically finding a record. Um, consent given 
you will have the option for um, looking at all candidate records perhaps that have not given consent if you want to see all the ones that have given consent uh, that's an option as well and either um, will allow you to find uh, basically any instance including if that field is empty um, but what we'll do for this search um, is is basically just try and find all candidates that have not given consent uh, what you've also got as well is a deleted items option as well. So um, it is possible um, if you wish to uh, only look for uh, records that you've deleted. Um, so if you're looking to go through a bulk of records that are in your deleted records segment, um, then it's possible to just do a search for all deleted records. Um, and then obviously that allows you to then run the workflow uh, to delete those, those records thoroughly. Well, well, we'll exclude those deleted records uh, for the purposes of this search. We're just looking to find um, a, a subset of records that are basically are candidates which have not given uh, consent. Um, you've got the option as well for date ranges. So you can look for, um, you could search on candidates perhaps where you've requested consent between a certain date period. Uh, reason being is obviously um, if you have requested consent and you've not had a response to that consent request, um, there reaches a point after a month where you, you need to be thinking about removing their record um, as they essentially uh, an opt a non response cannot be treated as, a, as an opt in. So um, that's the, the sort of uh, standard response that you would have to that. Um, you've got a response state option. So you can view how many uh, candidates responded with consent, or whatever status wise uh, within a date period. And the archive date is related again to the deleted items. So if you wanted to uh, look at your deleted items, um, but only look at perhaps records that you deleted within a certain period of time. If you wanted to sort of break it up into chunks, if you've got thousands of records in there, you could look at all records perhaps that you deleted within um, the first year or you know last year perhaps or the year before, um, just to sort of uh, break it up. But then you, you put in your from date and to rate date ranges within there. Uh, but what we're going to do for this search is look for all candidates that have not given consent um, and uh, exclude any deleted records uh, because we want to get a sort of a, a finite subset of records here uh, just for the purposes of the demonstration. Um, so when we run the report, those candidates are brought through. Um, just to take you through these options here, you have got the option to uh, click through into the ID of the, the record. You, could, you have got the option to obviously open up uh, the actual uh, candidate record associated um, uh, by clicking on those links. Um, obviously these fields have all been set to be um, sortable as well. Um, consents, consent given is they're all set to no here because obviously we've looked for them but if they were set to either um, then that could be yes or no or empty uh, and you could obviously sort and filter by that. Um, archive date is again feeds back to the delete, deleted date um, of, of the record by the old deletion process. Uh, requested date is obviously this requested date range within here, so consent requested, and obviously response date is when the response came back. Um, now this last column here uh, relates to whether or not the candidate is associated to any placements. Um, and as things currently stand, if the candidate is associated to placements, they're not going to be a record that can be deleted. Um, there's a variety of reasons uh, for that. Um, the initial reason being that um, on the grounds that if, a, if, you've, if you've placed a candidate, there's obviously uh, financial records now associated with that candidate. There's a, there's, a, there's a contract there, there is a back office workflow that has been followed, um, perhaps associated timesheets and, and, and various other uh, invoicing relating records that are all now associated with this candidate. Um, so going through a deletion process is um, uh, a far more in-depth uh, mechanism that um, as part of is, isn't part of this uh, current deletion uh, method. Uh, there's also grounds under legitimate interest that if you have placed a record in order to maintain a financial audit, that, that, that you don't delete that record. So um, as things currently stand, if a placement is associated to a candidate or contact, um, then it's going to say yes in this in this op in this field here, um, and it, you won't have the option to delete the record. However, if it's not a record that you've placed before, um, you're going to see no uh, in this column um, against that record line um, and you're going to have this option to delete the record. Um, and you've got the option to obviously delete the record um, either manually as a one off or you can delete all records uh, as a group process. Um, so if I just um, demonstrate the deletion of a record um, individually. Um, so first and foremost, you, if on clicking that delete icon, you'll get this option here of, 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 of um, advising that it's about to delete all those records. Are you sure you want to continue? Actually, before I delete the record, um, if we quickly just go into the candidate, 
just to demonstrate that what, what we're essentially doing when, by deleting the record um, is removing any um, trackable information about it. So their email address, the number, um, you know, basically the contact information, then their name, um, any any kind of track record of, of, of information that you have against them is what's about to be erased. Also, their history is going to be deleted as well. So um, the uh, history text of all history records will be wiped clean. Any notes that you have in there will be gone. Any skills that are associated to the record will also be removed as well. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go back to the record here and we'll say we'll delete this candidate. And then what you've got here is this will delete all records, all details for Mark Payne. You sure want to continue and we'll hit yes to that. And what it will then do is basically delete the record. Um, so as I say, the actual, the actual um, ID of the record um, hasn't physically been deleted. The ID of the record is now a shell record. Um, but if I return now to this candidate record, what you'll see is that essentially the information has been removed. Um, so in terms of uh, their surname, their, their name's now been changed to deleted candidate for a start. And any instance of uh, contact information has been replaced with uh, an asterisk or a star, uh, just hiding out. But we'll say hiding. It's it's not. It's not a case that it's it's hidden within the surface and, and it's showing this. It's a case of it's been replaced and deleted. Um, so you can see there that obviously that information is now gone. The mail shot status will be set to allow none. Um, that's just a, as an extra fail safe because that field has to contain some data, um, but that will be set as well. Um, if we go to history, um, you'll see that all those histories uh, are now gone and you've got a history there just tracking the date and time of when the actual deletion of the record took place. Um, notes are all gone. Um, skills are all emptied out. Essentially, the, the record has been wiped clean. And that's essentially allowing you to uh, adhere to uh, the legislation. Um, so that's the process for an individual record. Um, if you deleted a candidate through the uh, delete all process, um, so let's run here, right to be forgotten. And what we'll do is we'll run this search again. Only now we should only have one record to delete um, rather than the two. And you can see we've still got Hillary Payne there ready for delete. Um, what we can do is obviously have a delete all option here. Um, now what that will process will do is that will um, essentially mark the candidate primed for deletion and it will queue it up into a deletion process. So it won't perform the deletion um, real time at that point like, like it would do um, if you ran this. Instead it will queue it up ready to be deleted um, and then a service will be running on the server um, that will delete that record um, sort of every five to ten minutes as it's running through that service process. So um, that's just how we um, allow you to, to not get caught up in uh, waiting for the records to be deleted um, whilst you're um, running through this process, um, basically because obviously um, you could be deleting thousands of records and that will take quite a while to, to run through. So it's better to offer you the option of, of, of queuing up the deletion, uh, letting it run through in the background, um, and then that just allows you to carry on with, with whatever you might want to do on the system. Uh, but if you press delete all records, it's going to bring through the option here of confirm record deletion. We hit yes to that, um, and then the record is, is basically queued for deletion, among some other records that are also in, current, in the current queue as well. So that covers the uh, right to be forgotten process, um, and we'll now move on to the right to access option, which is the ability to view uh, a candidate's information in one go. So the last point relates to the right to access component of the GDPR legislation and that covers that a candidate or contact has the right to request uh, a summarised overview in terms of the data that you have on their system uh, or on your system, sorry. Um, so essentially that as an administrative task in itself could be quite extensive. Uh, what we've done is create a report that helps collate that information um, in a single overview um, which you can then export out into Microsoft Word um, and then from there you can obviously um, amend that as, as you see fit, brand it accordingly and obviously send it on then to the candidate or contact. Um, but if I just go through running that report to demonstrate that, um, this is run off the view tab, we then hit reports and the report we're in talking about is the GDPR entity details report, that's the specific report for this. 
Um, so covering the criteria that is available, um, what we have here is um, an option to select whether you're going with a candidate or a contact in terms of looking up, we'll choose for a candidate. Um, and you then select the ID of that record. Um, so what I'm going to do is enter in the ID of a record that I know to be um, useful in terms of uh, this report because it contains enough data uh, to populate the report properly. Um, you've then got an option here for include history so you can choose not to include any history in the report this is obviously any history logs held against the record um, or you could choose to include all history by just selecting yes or if you want you can choose to um, select the histories from within a certain date range um, so you could choose to select perhaps all the histories um, from the last from last year maybe from the last year or, or the last two years say um, as an example but, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll null those out and just say yes to include history uh, and that will basically include all history relating to this candidate into the report so when ready we hit view report and that then runs now there are 10 pages um, in the report uh, and if we just go through these one at a time, the first page um, is obviously the uh, basic details page, which is the first tab of a, of a candidate record. Uh, likewise, if you want a contact record, it'll be the first uh, page of a, of a contact record. Uh, we then go through any notes that you hold against the record, um, any skills that you've recorded. This is the parent skill and this is the child skill. Um, we then have any um, custom field data that you may hold against the system. Uh, or the record, sorry. Um, if, you, if you're using checklists, any checklist items uh, will be held in there, and obviously when they were actioned and their status. Any situations, which obviously their employment history or any educational um, record of, of experience that, that candidate has uh, will be will come through into this section here. Um, any requirements which you've short which you put them to, so any any requirements that you've shortlisted them to, um, C, CVs that you've sent from that requirements, perhaps interviews that you've arranged will come to as the next point um, sort of from the next tab. So um, any interviews, these are these are specifically uh, the dates in which interviews have, have taken place relating to different requirements. Um, any placement activity is the next tab along. So any placements that you have um, updated in terms of um, placed, sorry, any any placements where you have uh, placed that candidate into um, a certain um, role within the system will be uh, listed out here. And then we come to the last tab, which is history, which is obviously an overview of all the history that have been logged um, against that candidate record. Um, so that's an overview of the whole report. If we just go back to the f first tab there, um, what I'll do is I'll go back, I'll now export this into Word and you can just see how that comes out. So we're able to export that into Word. We'll enable editing. And then you can see there within the report or within the, the Word document, obviously we have uh, the report exported and each individual page uh, will be obviously the page from the associated report. Um, so you have that broken out um, across the board and from there obviously you can update and delete and um, edit, edit as you see fit, uh, essentially bring it to a point where it's ready to be passed on uh, to the candidate record. So that's the right to access report that is part of um, the uh, GDPR features that we've added um, and that essentially covers all of the GDPR functionality um, as the final point. Um, if you have any questions regarding any of this uh, functionality um, please contact the support team um, and a slide will follow uh, on this on this video with the details relating to that uh, but we hope that um, this video has been helpful and you now have all the information you need. Um, take care and thanks for watching.